Hey everybody, what's up? It's Danny, the Wicked Awesome Gardener, coming at you from the Wicked Awesome Grow Room, and today we are going to be planting bare root strawberries. Before we get started, go ahead and click that subscribe button so that you can stay up to date on all the videos that we're putting out. We just hit our 300th subscriber about 10 minutes ago. Woo! Yeah, I'm not a dancer. <laughs> you guys all know this by now. But I am seeing that most of the people that are watching our videos are coming back and watching them and watching them and watching them, but you're not subscribed. You know you like me. Go ahead and click that subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up. Go ahead and drop a comment in the box. Let me know that you're watching. I love engaging with all of you. I'm having a lot of fun with this channel and I'm just loving taking you guys along for the ride and seeing that you're just excited and crazy about this stuff as I am. <laughs> so go ahead, again, click that subscribe button and let's get going. So when it comes to strawberries, you typically have two types. You have your June bearing, which sets one large flush of fruit all at once, and it's typically in June. That can vary a little bit based on your temperatures and what zone you're in. Then you have Everbearing, which will set fruit continually all through the season, all the way through to frost. So I like to mix it up and I like to have both because I enjoy my strawberries. And while it's really nice to get one large harvest all at once, because then you can make like strawberry shortcakes and topping for cheesecake. Yes. But I also like to be able to just sample a few berries here and there throughout the whole season. I was going to go online this year and order my bare root strawberries by mail, but the timing didn't really work out for me. So I ended up having to go to Home Depot. Now the reason to go online versus a big box store is because there's just so many more varieties out there than your average big box has because obviously they can't devote that much shelf space to, you know, 30 different varieties of strawberries. I ended up happy with what I have. I'm going to have strawberries this year, but next year I'm going to order a couple more plants and I'll just have to try to figure out where to put them. But we'll see how that goes when I get there. In the end, I selected the Sequoia strawberry, which is a June berry, and the Ozark Beauty, which is an ever bearing. Most bare root strawberries actually come bare root, but for some reason these are in a big old pile of dirt, which I find actually makes it more difficult. But let me take you in and I'll show you what we're gonna do. I can see that these strawberries are already starting to come out of dormancy. You see this leaf is starting to green up. It means these have been in the store long enough. Way too much soil for these. I think if they're advertising bare root, it should actually be bare root. Here we go, we're starting to get somewhere. There's one crown, oh, there we go. This is what I was looking for. The rubber band that is holding this all together. And it still is, because it's through all those. Looks like I can start separating a little bit. Okay, Home Depot, I'm not loving you right now. So here are some root systems. There's the rubber band. Ha 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 ha. Can I get it out without damaging? You know what? Where's my scissors for me? Well, we'll let that rubber band work itself out. But there we go. Now we can start taking these apart. So now we can gently start to tease these apart. So 
So having the water here helps with separating out each plant, but I'm going to have to refresh this water because then the strawberries need to soak As you can see, their roots become pretty tangled and I'm pulling on them very gently and letting them separate, not breaking them. And these are so enmeshed together that uh, this is difficult. There we go. That one's separating. Now I'm going to go empty this because I need some good water for them to soak in. We're going to need a bigger bowl. And we're gonna let these soak for about an hour, and then when we come back, we'll get them all potted up. Done. So we have our Ozark Beauty, which are our Everbearing, and our Sequoia, which are our June Bearing here. They've been soaking for about an hour, so it's time to get them in some dirt. What I have here are eight inch pots. I have three of them in three different colors, and the reason for that is a little bit of a fun story. I'm also a real estate agent, so if you're on the North Shore of Massachusetts, and you are looking to buy a home, especially to sell a home right now in this crazy seller's market, not to give myself a little uh, blurb here, but I'm going to, reach out to me because it is a crazy market and having a professional on your side is gonna be key in getting your offers accepted or to get the right offer on your home. But back to the story, the reason why I have three different pots is because last summer I helped a family sell their home and find their dream home and they have three little kids and they had just planted strawberries. They were pretty bummed that they weren't going to get strawberries from their plants because they were gonna be moving. And I said, don't worry, I am gonna make sure that you guys have strawberries when you move to your new home. So spring is here and it's time to keep that promise. I'm gonna plant these and once they're out of dormancy and the leaves are green, I'm gonna drop them off of their front porch as a surprise. So normally when planting these outside, you want to give them about one foot of space all around. And that is because the strawberry plants will send out runners. You'll have the mother plant, a little vine will come out, start sprouting leaves. When they touch the ground, if there is dirt there, they will start growing roots down into the soil and spawn a whole new plant. But until it really establishes, it's still connected by that vine, which eventually will dry up. It's like a little umbilical cord. And the reason you would give them 12 inches of space all around when you plant the initial plant is because those, all those plants will eventually fill in that extra space. Since we're not going to be letting them do that, I'm gonna let them know that whenever they start sending off little runners, they can either root them in other pots and transplant them, or they could just clip them off and keep all of the energy here in these plants. I'm going to put three in each planter, which is a bit crowded, but again, they're not going to be filling in. So I'm going to put two Everbearing and one June Bearing in each planter. The trick to planting strawberries is, you see they have the root, you have the shoots and leaves, and then right here, you have the crown. You can see that's right where those roots stop and the plant begins. You do not want to bury this. You do not want to cover this with dirt. You don't want the soil to come up any higher than here, right at those roots. Even if the roots are a little bit above the ground, that is not going to hurt the plant, but if the dirt is anywhere above that level, you're going to rot out this crown and you're going to destroy and kill your strawberry plant. So. Soil here, not here or here, just right there. 
So we're just gonna dig a little hole on the side of the pot here. We're gonna let those roots go nice and deep. I am going to water these in with an organic liquid soluble fertilizer just to give them a good head start. Notice I'm being very careful not to get any soil on the crown. Press it in. And just for a closer look, you'll see that you can just barely see the roots all around the plant so that we don't get crown rot. I've noticed these ever bearings do not have as much of a root system with them as these uh, June berry ones do, which is interesting. And yes, these are a bit crowded. But it will be okay. Really the hardest part of planting these is making sure that your crown is not buried. And there we go, three strawberries in. So do I have more than nine plants here? Yes, I do. The rest of these are going to go in much larger planters out in the Wicked Awesome Garden. Another thing about strawberries is that if you really want a good harvest, you should pluck off all the flowers the first year and just let them concentrate on growing and establishing a good root system and just growing the plant themselves. I will admit that I do not do that typically. <laughs> I have not the patience, so I will be probably eating most of my strawberries this year. It won't be a very big harvest and it might keep them from being as productive next year, but I'm just impatient. And all I want to do is just snack on the berries. So, this is a do as I say, not as I do moment, which I, it seems I'm going to have a lot of those today because next I'm going outside to plant my beans and it's a little bit early for that as well because we are still two weeks from our last frost date. And I'll explain why I'm out there planting now once I am out there with the beans. But yeah, there we go. going to give this one to June bearing because I really would like more of those ever bearing in my in my planter so this could have got two June bearings but that's that's fine and if their mom watches these videos She's going to know it's coming, but oh well, surprise, I keep my promises. Now, a lot of people get concerned when they see that their strawberries don't immediately start putting on growth within a day or two. Keep in mind that these are still dormant, mostly. So it's going to take a week or two to really see any difference. Another thing that I want to note about planting in a pot is Notice that this has a solid base. This is a self-watering pot, so it creates a little reservoir for the plant to wick up without leaving it soaking in water. There are drainage holes at the bottom of this pot. But in regards to dormancy, you're going to see in about a week, maybe two weeks, 
depending on if you've got them inside, outside, they're going to start waking up and putting out new growth and then they'll go from there and they will be fine. If you don't see growth after two to three weeks, then you need to be concerned about whether or not maybe you buried them too deeply and they have crown rot or if they were just dead when you got them. Um, these leaves that are on them at least are telling me that these plants are alive. Another thing is that I am going to take these plants outside so they do not get acclimated to the conditions indoors, which is about 65 and sunny half the day. I want these outdoors so that they can be all acclimated to the outside. I don't have to go through the hardening off period. It's really just an annoying thing that I don't love having to do. It's the worst thing about gardening. Hardening off is carrying plants in and out and in and out and in and out multiple times a day. If you don't know what hardening off is, don't worry, I'm going to do a video. It'll be fine. These will be all set and used to the growing conditions outdoors so that once they get some growth on them and I go drop them off, the kids will be really happy to watch their strawberry plants grow. I'm going to take the rest of these outside and get them planted up in my long planters because it's a gorgeous day here in New England and I just have to be outdoors. All right, guys, I'll see you later. I've got to grow some more awesome food from yard to table. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more, please click here for more content. Don't forget to like and subscribe to stay up to date on our latest videos. Thank you so much for watching. I'm really excited to go through this journey with you while we grow something wicked awesome from yard to table.